Hi guys, this is Laura from Crafty Not Shifty and in this month's 10 card one kit video I'm hoping to answer a few questions that I get um, regarding how I use a card kit and how I come up with different ideas and different ways to make 10 cards using a kit each and every month. So the very first thing that I do is I'll take any elements like this where you have like um, designs or sections, so for this kit it's um, vellum tiles and I'm just going to go ahead and cut those down. So any any like sheets of patterned paper that have got like smaller sections that I might want to use as accents on the card, I'll go ahead and cut them down. So I've got a pile of these different pieces that I can use um, on the front of my card uh, kits, on the card kits, card designs. And it's just easier for me to then go through everything and sort of pick out my favourites and see how that looks next to the different pieces of patterned paper or maybe some of the different elements that come in the kit. And then that way I find it easier to figure out what I want my designs to look like. So for this I'm using my um, paper trimmer. And you'll notice that I'm doing each cut twice. Now that's just because I want to make sure that any of that like vellum design, um, particularly where there's like um, maybe some foiling next to like a colour, I want to make sure that I've cut that really cleanly and I've got rid of any of the, um, the next patterned piece. Does that make sense? Um, so rather than trying to cut perfectly straight down the line, which I mean I do try to do, um, I'll just go ahead and cut again and take off a tiny slither. I mean you can see those slithers um, there, it's really, you, you know, you're hardly losing anything. So once I've done that I'm just going to go ahead and um, put all of these together sort of in ones of similar size and um, then set them to one side with all of my different patterned papers. So I've gone ahead already and cut all of my card bases and I've actually taken a sheet of patterned paper that I think coordinates really nicely with each of these card panels. So the cards, I cut down my A4 cardstock in half and then folded it in half and then I took some pieces of the patterned paper that I thought would coordinate with the colour of the card base and I just basically work with whatever jumps out at me first. So whatever I really like the look of and I really want to make sure I use, I'll go ahead and take those pieces of this 6x6 six six paper and just pop them inside one of the cards. So at the moment I'm just going through with the vellum panels, there's certain pieces of the vellum that I know I'm going to want to use and I'm just sort of matching those up with um, different cards that I think they would go well, uh, go well with. So there's a couple of these that I'm not going to use vellum on so I'm just um, setting those to one side at the moment and for those I'll do something slightly different but I'm just making sure I've got my favourite pieces of vellum and I've married those up with a card base and also a 6x6 six six, um, background paper. So then for me what I like to do next is take a look at some of the different embellishments and um, so I've got these chipboard pieces which are really really thick, they're like layered chipboard pieces and I knew that I would want to use those on at least one of my cards um, so I picked, my favourite was actually that one with the um, cutlery, so I picked that one and um, found a piece of paper that I thought it matched with. And then these um, tags, I decided I wanted to use one of those uh, on a card and the paper that I actually picked for it to go with I didn't end up using um, but I married it up with one anyway. And then I knew that I'd want to use those stickers on quite a few of my cards so I just kept them sort of in my eye line as I was working and that's how I tend to work. I make sure I've got all of my card bases, I've got a piece of paper that matches with each of them, maybe any of the vellum accents or the chipboard pieces that I want to go with that or any of the other embellishments such as the ribbon and then I try to keep everything sort of laid out on my desk out of shot of my camera as I'm working so it's in my eye line and I can be inspired really easily. Okay so for card one I'm using that green card base and I'm using this patterned paper here and I've just gone ahead and applied ATG um, tape all over the card base and then stuck the paper down and I'm just using my trimmer to trim off the excess. You'll notice occasionally as I'm using my trimmer um, I do actually cut the smallest piece of the card base. That's sometimes because I've maybe not scored and folded my card perfectly and there's a little bit of extra card hanging off the edge. So for my vellum pieces, for almost all of my vellum pieces actually, I use my Xyron Creator Sticker Machine. This is the 5 inch machine and um, I run those pieces through and it applies adhesive nice and evenly all across the back of the vellum and it just makes it really easy to um, almost like hide the adhesive because it's really thin and it's evenly applied. You can't actually see it 
but if you don't have one of those sticker machines you can just go ahead and apply glue um, in any of the sections where you think it will hide it so usually behind foiled areas is a good idea. So to cover up those edges where the vellum meets the paper and just give it a nice clean finished look, I went ahead and added some of the wider like coffee coloured peel offs and then I just added a couple of decorative stickers at the top and the bottom. Okay, so moving on to the next card, I decided I wanted to use this black and white pattern. Um, I really like this and it kind of, I don't know, it reminded me of my sort of younger emo days where the checkerboard pattern and cherries was something that I definitely lean towards a lot more, um, so I thought I'd make a card that was slightly reminiscent of that. So I lined up the card on the, sorry, I lined up the 6x6 paper on the card base exactly where I wanted it and I marked that with a pencil and then just went ahead and cut it out. And then I just did what's called like a dry fit of all of the different pieces that I want to use on the card and just made sure I was happy with it. And I'm going to go ahead and stick this piece down and you can see that because I cut it slightly smaller than the card base, it just leaves a nice black border around the edge. So again, I'm just going to run my vellum through my creator sticker and um, the Love From Lizzie shop, so this obviously is the Love From Lizzie card kit for August 2017 and the Love From Lizzie shop does actually now stock the creator sticker machines um, in a couple of different sizes. So if you are looking for one of those for any of your vellum or for anything really that you want to turn into a sticker, um, I will have a link to the shop below. I then used my Misty. Now the reason I used the Misty is because I knew I was going to be stamping partly on vellum and partly on the cardstock and I just wanted to make sure that I got a really nice impression. I used Stays on Ink because the vellum is obviously a little bit glossy so I wanted something that I thought would stick really well to that vellum surface and then I just cleaned my stamp really well after using that Stays on Ink. It is like a solvent ink so you want to make sure that you clean your stamp really well after using it. So now I've got these red gems and I just wanted to cover the cherries completely. So rather than paper piece them or colour them in, I just thought, you know what, there's all different sizes of gems here and there are a ton of them. So I went ahead and actually filled in those cherries and I just used a couple of different sizes. I started with the largest and then as the gaps got smaller and smaller, I used these smaller gems and I just think it looks really nice. I'm really pleased with how this turned out. So I did go ahead and bring in some green gems that I had in my stash and I just used those to fill in the um, stems of the cherries. I could have stamped the leaf as well and also filled that in um, but to be honest I didn't really think of it at the time so I might go back and do that at a later point. So I then decided to use the die cut that comes in the kit and also the red like glimmer uh, card. This is such a nice shine on the glimmer papers that are in this kit, I really like it. So I went ahead and cut that out and it's a, just a really sweet sentiment, it's made with love and then that heart and I just used my multi-medium in the matte finish with a fine tip applicator to go ahead and add that to the card and while that was drying I just used a glue, uh, glue block, that's, that's not the right word, I used a stamp block to hold that in place. So as you can already see, as I'm working through each of these cards, I'll take that initial idea of the um, card panel that I want to use and the 6x6 patterned paper and potentially the um, extra you know, additions. I knew I wanted the apron on this card um, and I definitely wanted to stamp the cherries, but I then, as I bring it together, I'll add something else such as that die cut sentiment. So for this next card I knew I wanted to use the different triangle shapes from the stamp set to make like a quilted background. So I started in the centre of my card and I stamped um, all of these different shapes in a couple of different colours of ink until I had the entire card panel covered. And then what I'm doing here is I'm just actually using my bone folder and I'm just scoring some lines wherever I've got straight lines in the, um, in the stamp pattern. So I hope that makes sense. I've just brought in some foam um, for a background and I'm actually, I gave up on the, um, on the scoreboard because I've got, you know, lines going in all different directions. So I just wanted to make sure that it was much easier for me to just go ahead and score those using a ruler and my bone folder. And then once I had all of those scored, I decided to add a little bit of dimension and to really make this quilt pattern pop. So I've got a um, just a, a round ended like stylus here. I think it's actually used for um, modeling clay, but I found that in my, in my craft room and I thought this will work perfectly to just go ahead and add some texture and some dimension to the background of this piece. 
So I'm just rubbing that in inside each of those triangle shapes and it's really puffing up the background of the paper and giving it a 3D look. So now just to reinforce those what would be if this was a real quilt sort of the seam areas so this is the areas that I've just indented with the bone folder and to just reinforce those and darken them up a little bit and make it stand out I'm using the um, peel offs that came in the kit this is one of the thinner peel offs and I'm just going ahead and sticking that along each of those seams and cutting off any excess. So I decided the sentiment happiness is homemade would be perfect for this card. It just kind of goes with that like homemade quilt feel to it. And to make sure I keep all of that interest and the dimension in this background, I'm just applying adhesive on any of those raised areas where I used my bone folder to um, separate each of those triangles of the quilt pattern design. So I'm just going to carefully place that down on the cardstock and I'm not going to put anything on top of that while it dries because I don't want to smush down any of that dimension. And then again just to outline this piece I'm using one of the thicker peel offs and I'm laying that down right around the edge of this piece and just using my craft knife to just sort of press down gently into those edges and it's a really easy way to cut off any excess on those peel offs. And I just love the way it like frames up any piece or wherever you put two different pieces of pattern paper together it just sort of um, masks that seam and gives a nice professional clean looking finish. So hopefully you can see some of the dimension there on that quilted background. I really do like how it turned out even if my stamping is a little bit wonky. Okay so for the next card I've got a yellow card base and I'm just applying HEG tape all over the back and then adding this background piece with which is sort of a yellowish colour with the red stars and again just trimming off any of the excess and I keep all of those excess pieces in a pile and anything that I think is big enough to use again I will keep um, anything that's too small I'll, I'll try my best not to hoard it and I'll actually throw that away so I've got another vellum panel here again once again it went through my creator sticker machine and then I'm just going to trim off some of the excess so it's not the exact same size as my card panel, it's a little bit shorter and a little bit um, longer if that makes sense. So I trimmed off the excess on either side and then I've just cut these two strips of the red glimmer cardstock. And I'm just using my glue pen to add those to the top and the bottom of the card to hide that card base and just add a little bit more interest and bring some more of that red colour into the background. So I'm using some of my stamp blocks again just to hold that in place while it dries. I really do like to do this um, and just sort of set things to one side while I figure out what the next step is and then by the time I move on um, the piece is dry. And I've got these lips from the stamp set and I've stamped that onto the vellum using some red ink. Now with this being on the vellum panel I know that it's not going to dry very easily or it'll take a very long time to dry. It would definitely need heat setting as a minimum and most likely um, you need to add clear embossing powder and then heat set it that way. So that's what I did here just to make sure that that doesn't smudge and it adds a really nice amount of shine onto the um, stamped image anyway which is really nice for those lips. I added a banner from the sticker sheet just in that top right hand corner and then I'm just adding a couple more accents to the background by using the Nouveau Drops. And that's it for this card. So moving on to the next card, I knew that I wanted to make a shaker card with the items in this kit. There was a really nice mix of sequins that came, this is like a sample size of sequins, so I wanted to make use of those by making a shaker, so that's what I'm doing here. I'm just taking some of my 3M foam tape and I'm folding that in half so I've got extra thickness and then because this is quite wide I'm actually using my non-stick scissors just to cut down the middle of that as best I can trying to keep it even so I've got some thinner um, but nice and thick pieces of double-sided sticky tape. So what I'm doing here is I've got a sheet of acetate, I appreciate that's quite difficult to see in the video, um, but I'm just going ahead and adding the foam tape all along the edges of the acetate. And what I'm doing with the corners there is I'm just sort of mitering each of the corners as I go, and it just means that if someone was to look at your card from the side, they just see a really nice finished like box of the foam tape, rather than seeing sort of different pieces of it sort of stuck together at funny angles. So now I've stuck that foam all over the um, acetate piece. I've gone ahead and added some of the sequins into what will be my shaker area and I measured this acetate before I cut it so it would fit nicely behind this vellum piece. 
So I've gone ahead and ran that through the sticker machine and then I'm just placing that on top of my acetate. And I think it's a really nice way to make a shaker um, with the vellum as the front window. It sort of just mutes everything and dulls it down but you can still see everything shaking in the background. And with the seed beads that are in this uh, sequin mix, you get a really nice sound to that shake as well. So again, I've just got a couple of the stickers from the sticker sheet and I've added a row of hearts and then the sentiment, let's eat. So it was a really easy shaker card. I like how this one came together and I think it's one of my favourites. Okay, so this next card I think is also one of my favourites um, and it's really quick and easy to put together. So I used this dot pattern paper on the background and I just covered the whole card base in this background and then took it to my paper trimmer and just trimmed off any of the excess. And then once I was happy with that, I took a sheet of cardstock here and I'm just adding some double-sided sticky tape onto the back. And I'm going to use this burlap ribbon that came with the kit and I'm just sticking that to one end and folding it over and then making sure I've got it nice and straight, just sticking that to the other end of the double-sided sticky tape and then I can go ahead and use my scissors to cut off the excess. So I just add some extra ATG tape onto any of the white sections of that background and this piece of paper here you might recognise it's actually one of the offcuts from an earlier card that I'd saved and I just stuck that down in the centre of my card and then I've got this really thick chipboard piece here. Um, now as I was pulling it off the background a couple of the layers did separate ever so slightly and I don't think it would have been a problem however I just added a little bit of multimedia in the matte finish just to make sure that everything sticks together really nicely. And that's it, it's a really simple card, but I think it's really effective and it looks really nice. So for card seven, I'd actually picked two patterned pieces of paper to use on this card, and I'm gonna do something that I haven't done for a while, but it's a really nice card design that I like to use frequently. So I'm cutting down both pieces to match the size of my card panel exactly, and again, I'll just keep those extra pieces to one side. And once I'm finished making these cards, I will put those into my patterned paper um, stash. So then I've got both of these pieces, one on top of the other, and I'm just putting them at an angle inside my paper trimmer and cutting off a triangle from the bottom. And then I can use those to make two cards just by alternating um, the cut piece at the bottom section there. So I'm just placing these down, face down onto my work surface and just securing them together with a piece of, it's actually post-it note tape, but you could use just regular salad tape as well. It's just to hold them in place while I go ahead and add some ribbon to the left hand side. And I'm using this like velvet ribbon that came in the kit. It's a really nice soft velvet ribbon and um, it kind of reminds me of, um, I don't know, like those like waistbands that you would have when you were younger if you, if you did ballet. I don't, I don't really know what they were for, um, but you would always have like a velvety waistband that you'd wear as part of your um, your ballet outfit, or maybe, maybe that was just me. Um, so then for this vellum piece, I'm actually just using my ATG tape and running that across the top and the bottom, just to show that, you know, you don't have to have the sticker machine to use the vellum. It's just my preferred method of sticking down vellum. So I stuck this to a piece of white paper. Um, this is actually scrap white cardstock, not paper. Um, and then adding some ATG to the back of it. I'm just gonna go ahead and stick that down onto the card front. But before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and cover up the seam where those two pieces of paper meet with the coffee colored peel off. And you can just see straight away how, how, um, how much that adds to the card. It really is quite effective for something so simple as to just adding that peel off. So I also used a little bit of multi-medium in the matte finish to secure down that ribbon and then added my vellum panel. So the reason I'd stuck it onto that white background is I wanted you to be able to read the sentiment that's sort of um, etched into that foiling and it says life is what you bake it which I think is really nice and um, I think I'm going to give this card to one of my friends that does an awful lot of baking. So I'm just going to town with these peel-offs now, um, adding them all over the card. I've sort of outlined the ribbon with them. I'm also outlining this vellum piece. And I used an awful lot of the peel-offs in my cards this month, but I've still got so many left. You really do get an awful lot of them on that sheet. Um, same goes for the gems. I had two different coloured gems. One came in the kit and one I purchased as a add-on. Um, and I had so many left after I'd finished with these cards. So I've got the banner here. I think I actually stamped this upside down, um, but I was looking at it and I figured for this particular card, I like the way it looked this way. And I stamped that and then the made with love sentiment, it, 
into uh, the inside and I hadn't used a dark enough ink so I just went ahead and outlined that with a sharpie. My head was in the way for all of that so I cut that out of the video so you didn't have to stare at the back of my ponytail. And once that was done I just went ahead and stuck down the panel onto my card base and I decided that sentiment wasn't quite popping enough so I went ahead and just coloured the background piece in white. I could have stamped this all again onto a separate piece of paper and cut it out and stuck it on top and that would have worked as well. So from the next card, um, every time I looked at this piece of paper, all I could see was sort of this triangle design. So I wanted to somehow make that work on the card and I decided I was going to take some of the glimmer cardstock and I was going to create a backer on the card um, for that triangle piece. So to add some interest onto my red card base, I've just got some Versamark ink and I'm actually just using this as a watermark ink. So rather than adding any embossing powder or anything else on top to stick to that Versamark, I'm just using the Versamark to sort of darken the cardstock with that lip print. So I've got three pieces of the Glimmer cardstock, each one cut slightly um, narrower than the piece before. So I'm just gonna go ahead and stick all of those one on top of the other and I'm using all three Glimmer cardstocks that came in this month's kit. I like the sort of art deco feel to these pieces layered on top of each other. So again I've got the peel offs and this time I'm actually laying them directly on top of my red patterned piece of paper. So you don't always have to use them to cover up a seam, um, I'm just using them to add some interest to the edge of this piece. And then I'm using some adhesive to stick that down onto the centre of that gold piece there. So once I stuck that down onto my card base, I knew I wanted to add something else to this card and originally I was hoping to use the chalkboard tag, but in the end I decided to go with something slightly different and use one of the cork tags instead. So I've stuck one of the hearts that was in the kit, these are the um, craft stickers, and I just went ahead and used that as a template to cut out a heart from the centre of this cork piece. And I think it just looks really sweet with that heart cut out. So then I lined this up on my card, I fussed for this, with this for quite a while. Um, I did have to do a little bit of card surgery, I went ahead and peeled up that panel that I'd stuck down, um, just so I could tuck in the extra string from the cork board, um, the cork tag, so I could stick those inside that panel so they weren't hanging over the inside of the card. And I'm just using a binder clip to hold that in place while it dries, and I made sure to line that up with one of the apples. So I've got this sentiment made with love and I'm stamping that on the piece of paper and the sort of um, tag that came in the kit, this like metal uh, tag here. I'm sure it has a better name than a tag, I just can't think of it right now. And I went ahead and used some multi-medium to stick that down to the backing piece. And then I used some glue to stick the whole thing onto my card. So I've got a couple of teeny tiny foam squares, so these actually came from the Love From Lizzie travel packs. And if you haven't seen my blog yet about the travel packs, I actually took these on a road test and I made a whole bunch of car uh, cards whilst I was sat in the car on a road trip using um, supplies from the travel pack. So if you haven't already seen that, I'd encourage you to go and check that out on my blog. And then I just used some normal, regular sized foam tape to stick down that metal tag. And I just filled in those little holes at the side with some red gems. And then that's it for this card. I really like the way that cork piece sort of swings around. I think it just adds something really interesting to this card. So I'm pleased with how that turned out too. So now I'm going to use this quilt patterned piece. And I've just cut off a design um, that I will stick at the top and the bottom of this card. Again, this is another card that came together really easily. I think this month's kit was one of my favourites to work with. I found it really quick and easy to bring these cards together and I really enjoyed the like vintage kitchen theme. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to making some more cards using this kit because I've got so many supplies left as well. Now, what I should have done here is actually trim down the patterned pieces of paper before I cut this sticker, because you'll notice here that there isn't quite enough to cover the card panel at this point here when I stick it down, but I just went ahead and trimmed off the excess, and then that tiny piece that was left um, that I trimmed off from the bottom matched up perfectly for me to stick down there. This sentiment cracks me up, so I love this. It's watch me whip, and then it's got a little like whisk there that you'd use to like whip eggs or whatever in the kitchen. I just think it's really sweet, it made me laugh. So I used some um, double thickness 
craft foam to stick that down and then added that little like bake in the bottom left hand corner and I'm just adding the kitchen sentiment from the sticker sheet and I started with the letter in the middle so the C and then worked my way out and this just helps to make sure that you get perfect placement and that the sentiment is nice and centered across the front of the card. I think this is the perfect size sentiment actually it just fills up that card really nicely so I could leave the card how it is but I decided to just add a little bit more interest to the background and bring in the gold gems and add a few of those in different sizes just around that sentiment and just it's just a really nice way to sort of frame it up and add something extra to your card. So generally whenever you're adding embellishments like this I believe the general rule of thumb is to try and add them in odd numbers because it's more like visually pleasing and also you want to create sort of a visual triangle around your sentiment or your focal point and that'll just help to draw the eye in. So I decided to focus on the watch me whip rather than the kitchen at the top and just add a few different uh, gems around that. Okay, so now on to my final card. I've got this patterned piece here, which is just lovely. I really like this piece. It's got so many interesting little elements on the pattern design, but I decided just to cut down some tiny pieces so it wasn't too overwhelming. And I'm going to use those on either side of my card. And then I have this vellum piece here that I wanted to trim out so it was just the heart shape rather than any of that background. This was one of the smaller square pieces that was at the start of the video. And then I ran that through my sticker machine and I'm adding this actually to the um, magnetic sheet that came in the kit. So I wanted to turn this into a kitchen magnet and I just used my scissors to cut this out. Again, these scissors um, came in the Love From Lizzie travel pack. I got a couple of the travel packs, so I've got a few pairs of these scissors um, and they're really handy. I just keep them in a tub on my desk and whenever I can't find my scissors, I think, okay, well, I know there's several pairs in there, so I'm just gonna grab a pair and I've got something to work on without having to hunt everywhere for my scissors because they go missing on my desk all the time. Anyway, so I've got some more double-sided craft foam and I'm just adding that to the back of those patterned pieces so I can have them slightly raised up. And I've got a piece of the um, gold glimmer cardstock in the background there. I keep saying gold, I, I'm not entirely sure. Is it a gold? It's more of a um, sort of a dull gold or like a bronzy colour. Whatever it is, it looks really nice. So I stuck that down to my card base. I don't know how I managed to miss that filming, but there we go. Um, I stuck it down and then added the two patterned pieces either side, which are raised up from the card base, and then just added a couple more of the peel-offs just, um, just to neaten up those edges. So I've got this um, magnetic piece here and I'm gonna wanna stick that down on the card, but just in the background that I've got left there, I'm adding the self-adhesive um, craft coloured hearts and I was going to add the magnetic sheet to the background of one of the hearts and I thought that that would be enough to hold my magnet onto the card however it wasn't so I thought well I know that I wanted to use one of these chipboard pieces at some point or chalkboard sorry chalkboard pieces so I went ahead and added adhesive onto the back of one of those and then covered that with the remaining magnetic sheet so what I'm trying to do here is make something magnetic that I can stick to the card so then I can add the magnet onto the front of the card and the recipient can just, you know, go ahead and peel that off and use it as a magnet in their kitchen or wherever they want to use it. So I could have just used some like low tack adhesive tape or removable um, adhesive to stick it down and that would have worked as well. However, because I had so much of the magnet sheet left, I decided to try and do it this way. So now I'm just adding a little um, gem into the center of that bow and also I decided to add one into the hole at the top of the tag and I had gone ahead and punched out the hole at the top of the magnet, the uh, kitchen magnet there, but I decided it looked nicer with a gem so I added a gem on top. And that's it, that's that piece finished. So that magnet can just go ahead and peel off when the recipient gets the card and they can use that wherever they like. Okay, so here are all 10 of the cards together. I'll just do a final run through of the cards that I've made today and show you those here. I really love how this one turned out with the um, sort of extra in, like 3D effect of having all of those gems coloring in the cherries. For this card here, I did want to mention that I was inspired by a tutorial that I saw on Lindsay the Frugal Crafter's site, and I'll make sure I've got that linked where she goes into much more detail on how to create that 3D effect um, quilted pattern. 
So then the shaker card here, I can't stop playing with this. It really does have a really cool like shaker sound as you rattle it because of those seed beads inside. I am a bit of a sequin hoarder and I've got loads of sequins, but I think um, these ones with the shaker beads included definitely have to be a favorite because of the extra like audio effect that you get when you shake those cards. And I just love how that little cork piece turned out as well with the heart cut out of it. And it was actually really easy to cut through that cork. So I definitely um, encourage you to give that a try. And then this last card here with the removable magnet piece, I really like how that turned out. But once again, you could just go ahead and use removable or low tack adhesive and get a very similar effect. Okay, so now I'm just going to do a quick run through of everything I've got left in the kit or from the kit. So I've got my burlap ribbon here as well as the velvet ribbon and the twine. I've got enough shaker mix left to make a couple of shaker cards. I've got those chipboard pieces and my cork as well as my Nouveau drops. And I didn't use this here, but I've got a chalkboard marker that will get a lot of use in my craft room because I have a chalkboard and every month I write like all the cards that I need to make for people. I've got my chameleon pen, which again, I didn't use in the video, um, but I did have a play with it on this image here and it, it's just lovely. I think it's my favorite color so far of the chameleon pens. So I've also got my glimmer paper and quite a lot of the shimmer paper left. I've of course got my stamp set and my die. I've got quite a few vellum tiles left and chipboard pieces, as well as a ton of stickers. I didn't use these alphabet stickers at all. And um, I've got a sizable amount of paper left as well, actually, the patterned paper. So I did use a lot on the cards, however, I have got quite a few pieces left, as well as the um, quite a lot of the stickers from the sticker sheet. So I've got these pieces of paper here that I haven't been touched, and then these are the scraps that I'm going to keep because I think they're large enough that I'll be able to get something out of them. Anything smaller than this I do go ahead and get rid of because unfortunately I can't keep everything forever because I'd end up on like a hoarder's TV show. Okay, so that's everything that I had left over in the kit. I'm just gonna run through in just a second and show you all of the extras that I used. And if you don't have any of these extras, you could substitute for anything that you have on hand. So I'm just realizing at this point that I actually forgot to show you, I don't just have the gold gems left, I've also got the red ones, um, and I'm hunting around for them and I found them on the floor because I'd knocked them off my craft desk. So there we go, I've got those red gems left as well and they'll go into my stash. Okay, so now I'm just gonna run through the extras that I used that weren't included in the kit. Of course, my Creator Sticker Machine and my ATG Tape Gun did get a good workout in this video. If you don't have these products, that's fine. You can easily substitute them for what you have on hand in your craft stash, but essentially I used various different types of glue. I then used this rounded tool and my bone folder, as well as a couple of different stamp blocks and my Misty. I used a paper trimmer and also some scissors, a couple of different types of pair of scissors um, throughout the video because whenever I can't find a pair, I just grab the nearest pair. Um, I've just got this blade here to represent my other paper trimmer, my craft knife, my self-healing mat, and my tweezers, that Sharpie for when my ink wasn't quite dark enough, and a couple of different pencils and those green gems. I've got some 3D foam squares and foam tape my Versamark ink, my Versafine ink, and um, this is the Alter New ink that wasn't quite dark enough, and then I had four different colours of the Simon Says Stamp ink, and also a red colour of a My Favourite Things ink that I used my clear embossing powder and my heat, to uh, heat tool with, and then just some acetate that helped me make that shaker card. So thank you for sticking with me for this video. It was a little bit longer than usual. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please let me know in the comments. And on screen right now are a couple more videos that I think you might enjoy. If you haven't already, then go ahead and hit subscribe and I hope to see you here again soon. That's all from me. Bye for now.